Hello, my name is Liana Kiff. Today I'm going to show you how to use drawing templates in your Perspectives application to provide different visual effects. Each use case and user has different requirements for completing their tasks. In this example, we can switch from a view that highlights different types of data to a view that highlights social connections between people and changes nodes into edges. Another example is showing flows. In this case, we're showing a supply chain that starts at a particular location with a country code indicated. Switching to a view with symbols makes the flow between countries much more obvious. With node templates, you can also assign different templates to different levels of zoom. For the mile high level, you can use simple nodes with just color. And then when you zoom in, you can add more detail. Now let's walk through a few simple examples to get you started. We're starting with a simple project that I have pre-configured, and we're looking at data that describes actors, movies, and directors. This data is coming from a sample Neo4j database, and we access that data using our Neo4j integrator. You can review our Neo4j integrator demonstration for more information. We're using this simple cipher query to pull up information related to actors or directors named Reiner. We can review the results of our query in the bindings view. Let's take a look at where you find drawing templates in a Tom Sawyer Perspectives project. I've set up three different drawing templates in this project and three different drawings. We'll review these together. Every project has a default template which has built-in templates for each element that you might include in a drawing. For this project, all the nodes we'll be displaying are either movies or persons, so that's what we'll concentrate on. I have already used our expression editor to create an expression that will automatically choose the right label for each node based on the node type. Our documentation includes all the information you need to work effectively with functions to create expressions that mine information from your model to display on screen. Now let's look quickly at our generic drawing view. You can see we've applied our default template to this view. I've already configured movie and edges, but let's add the domain row for persons so you can see how to add the nodes. We select persons as a new domain. I'm going to move it to the top of the list because that's where I'd like to see it. And if I right click on actions and select structural add node, I can accept all the defaults here. And this will put a person node on the screen for every person that is returned in our query. And it will use the default template. We also add movies, again, using the default template. And then we add all edges and again we're using all the defaults for these actions. It's a very simple drawing. When we look at our preview now we see that we have people and we also have movies but we really can't tell them apart and there are also people who have more than one connection to the same movie. And if we inspect those items we can see that they have a different edge type, but this drawing isn't helping us to understand what those edge types are. So let's see if we can improve upon this drawing with our templates. We'll use the template editor to change how nodes are displayed in our drawing. We still have a default template, but now we also have a specific template for a movie. But let's add a template for person. To add a template, we right-click on Node and select Add Template. And now we can name our template Person. Now we can specify that our parent template should be the default. In this way, we inherit the kinds of look and feel that have already been set for our default. You can see it looks just like the default we had. But let's select a new color for this node so that we can distinguish the nodes a little more easily. Since this template is specific to persons, we no longer need a function to specify the text to display. 
So we'll use the function editor here to select the correct field on our person schema, which is the name field, and that will represent the text in the note. I prefer to see the person first in the list, so I'm going to use the arrow to move person up to the top. And the same is true for movies. We have a movie specific node, it looks a little bit different, and it has different information for the label. Now let's look at the default edge template. We're not going to change the style of the edge just yet, but let's add a tooltip which tells us what kind of edge it is. Next we're going to modify the edge label template because an edge label will make it more obvious to the user exactly what kind of edge is on display. We'll take a look at the definition of our second drawing. In this drawing view, we've adjusted the movie to use the movie template, and the person as well uses the person template. And let's look at what we've done with edges. Now we add the edge, and it still uses the default template and the other defaults but we also add the edge label, and here's where we assign the type name for the edge label. We'll bring up the editing dialog so you can see how you set these values. Our new drawing is much easier to read. We can easily tell the difference between actors and movies, and what each edge is telling us about the relationship between the actor and the movie. That's a big improvement, but let's try a few more changes. Let's look at our final domain-specific template where we're going to add a little bit more to define our nodes. Our movie node now has an image representing it instead of a generic icon. And you can select an image using a normal file name picker. Um, you can also reference other file sources like URLs uh, we're going to do the same thing for our person object and we're also going to set a tooltip for the person because knowing how many movies they've directed or how many movies they've acted in could be interesting. To display the information of interest we're going to use two different functions together. The list function, list length, will count the number of items in any list that is given as an argument. So we'll use that function in combination with the out edge list, which is a model function, which looks up all of the outgoing edges on a node that have a specific type. We can combine these two functions, providing the right argument for our edge type and also static text. In this template, we're also going to specify more features related to edges. So here you can see we have the default template, but we've also added a template for director and for the acts in relationship. And for the sake of demonstration, I've selected a very bright color and a lot of contrast for the two different edges. And we're also selecting a different edge style for the axe-in relationship. And you can see the other styles that are available here. Another thing that will make our drawing more useful is to be able to see what role the actor is playing. So here we're going to set a tooltip that looks up the name of the role from the field on the axe-in relationship and displays that to the user as a tooltip. On the director relationship, there is no role, but to be consistent, we would like to display the same kind of tooltip, so this one is just plain text. We're going to modify one more significant thing in our new template, which is to add a node label for movies. And by doing this, these node labels will behave a little bit differently than the just the text on the node. We're going to change the color of the titles of the movies 
based on the movie genre. We can do this by using the map to color function. You can see here that map to color will create a color map for you. It will assign a color to each value in a range of specific values. And here we want to color it based on the movie genre. So we go and select that field from movie and we have our color map set. And you can see right away in the preview at the bottom that the title color has changed. So let's take a look at our last drawing view definition and see what we've modified. On movie, we're still just adding a generic node, but now we're adding a node label. And you can see that we add the title as text, and we also establish where we want that label to be displayed. Double clicking on the definition opens up the settings dialog so you can experiment with the different options that are available. We haven't made any changes to the person node, but we have added special elements now for the axe in edge and the directed edge. These changes have had a dramatic effect on the utility of our drawing. Now we can see tooltips that explain the roles between movies and actors. And we can readily distinguish the movie objects from the person objects. And when we hover over people, we can see the tooltip we built that tells us how many roles they've had and how many movies they've directed. In this drawing, we started with hierarchical layout but we can also use orthogonal. And now this is an example of what bundle layout looks like. Bundle layout reduces the number of lines in the drawing. Let's take a moment to look at some other behaviors. If I select a movie, we see that it comes up in the tree view. Though we didn't show you how to build the tree, when you use the same color map for your tree view, your tree view becomes the legend for your color system. We can use the tree view to select and navigate information in our drawing. And now you can see that even though we have three drawings in this project and they all use different templates, all of the objects are still synchronized across views. In this video, we reviewed how to use templates to improve the utility of your drawings. Thank you for joining us. Contact Tom Sawyer Software today for your free trial.